All praises, all honor, all glory be unto Yahweh, Bahashem Yahushai, Bahashem Raka Kodash. Double honors to the apostle elders of great millstone that rule well. Peace and salutation unto the elect, and peace and salutation unto all the Akim doing and pushing this word in all honesty, truth, and sincerity worldwide. Um, so, you know, this is a topic that we always, you know, get into. Don't waste your time with these uh, two-thirds and the rest of these people out here arguing and whatnot, okay? Because they, they're not going to get it, okay? Like I titled it, we tell you, but do you listen? You know, it falls on deaf ears. They're not going to listen. As a matter of fact, let me jump into a scripture before I go even further because they're cursed, okay? These two-thirds are cursed with a curse. Actually, hold on a second. Let me get into something real quick, too. Psalms chapter 51 and verse 11. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Okay? You have to have the presence of Yahweh Shem Shai. You have to have... Actually, to tell you the truth, you have to have um, allowance from Yahweh. Okay, because in Luke, let me or John. Let me see if I can get it six. So you can't just pick this up, come, you know, run with it and think you can master it, like this is some kind of uh, video game or something like that. Yeah, how about Shimmy Shai has to give this on to you? John chapter six and uh sixty five and he's and he and he said, therefore Say I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. Okay? So you can't serve, you can't come serve your Hauba Shimeo Shai unless the Father set that route for you. Okay? Remember in Jeremiah, before you were before you were formed in the belly, alright? I chose your route in life. Okay, Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5, or 4. Then the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So, you can't come and, uh, uh, you know, uh, do this unless the Lord is giving you that key, okay? It's like a door. You know, everybody's got a key, and only the ones where that uh, key fits into and unlocks, right? Because everybody got a key, but does it fit? Does it unlock that door? No. So unless you have that specific code, that key, to get into that door, you're not going to understand this. You're going to be on the outside, you're going to be like, you know, somewhat, some little here or there, but you're not going to get the full understanding of this, okay? Because the Lord has to give you that spirit. Now, going back into this, two-thirds, they have not been given that spirit. They've been given the spirit of error. They've been given the spirit of sleep and slumbering, okay? They've been given the spirit not to be uh, uh, concerned, but you, you know, if you hear this word and understand it, you've been given that spirit from Yahweh Shem Yahushai to hear and understand it. And we're not just here to hear and understand. We're here to become teachers Like in Second Timothy tells you, you know, unto those men, faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. We're not just here. We're not here to be mockingbirds or, you know, none of that. You're here to become a teacher yourself, okay? Like the scriptures say, what what good is it if you hoard up all that? Actually, let me get that real quick. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, Sirach chapter 20 and verse 30. Wisdom that is hid and treasure that is hoarded up. What profit is in them both? Okay. Like, you know, when somebody um, has a lot of money and they're cheap with it, you're going to die. So you might as well spend it, use it wisely, right? So what's the sense of you, you know, stashing that up? You're only stashing it up for somebody else, okay? So going back into this, let's go to uh, Psalms chapter 69, 20 22. Uh, Psalms chapter 69 and verse 22. Let their table become a snare before them, and that which should have been for their welfare, let it become a trap. This is for their welfare, okay? And it has become a trap unto two-thirds, okay? A sneer. You need guidance, just like we need the guidance in this truth. You know, uh, what was that, Philip? When the uh, Ethiopian eunuch, right? The man from Ethiopia, I must say, which was an Israelite. You know, he said, how, 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 could, I, how could I accept a man teach me? Okay, so we all needed, um, you know, in the beginning, we all needed that teaching. But even if you try to teach this on to two-thirds, it becomes like a sneering trap onto them. They can't understand it. They don't get it. Okay. And you know what the scriptures say. If they're going to be fuck-ups and fuck-ups for life, right? And they're going to be a fuck-up who's going to drop out or, you know, just gen in general fucking up the scriptures and you know just a a, a drop out or a bug out well it would have been better for them not to hear this word okay than for them to hear it because now they put a a, a a mark on themselves okay so anyways let their table become a snare before them and that which should have been for their welfare let it become a trap let their eyes be darkened that they see not and make their loins continue to shake. Okay. So basically this is a prayer put up that these two thirds, you know, they wouldn't get this uh, knowledge, wisdom, or understanding. Okay. That they would be blind. All right. So when we tell you about arguing with these two thirds and whatnot, you know, with something that we walk by, which is faith, they're not going to understand that either, okay? They're going to take that and laugh at it and take it as a joke. Well, these guys, faith-based faith -based Israelites. You know, when the scriptures constantly talk about faith, okay? So let's get into this. The order that the Lord set up, he set up his prophets, okay? And he set up his prophets to speak unto you. Since the beginning of time. Luke chapter 1 and verse 70. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. Right? And where can we find this also? When we go into Genesis, this will uh, back it up as well. So the prophets have always been here. Genesis 3. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 8. And they heard the voice of Yahweh Power, Yahweh Power, walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife, Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of Yahweh Power amongst the trees of the garden. When it goes amongst the trees of the garden, it's talking about these other nations. Okay, the other peoples. Now, when it's talking about um, the mouthpiece, okay, the mouthpiece, uh, uh, Slakia, yeah. when they heard the voice of Yahweh walking in the in the garden in the cool of the day, that's the prophets, okay. It wasn't Yahweh actually there walking. No, what's the scriptures tell you? <laughs> what's the scriptures tell you that if Yahweh was to even, you know. Uh, move forth upon this place, it would crumble and break, man, just out of his presence, okay? This place is too weak 
<laughs> too weak for the presence of the Lord, man. And furthermore, so the Lord told you that this place is damn near like his footstool. All right. So. Anyways, going back into this. So since the beginning of the time, the prophets have been here. So when we, you know, when we're out there on the highways and byways and we're speaking this word, we're only looking for a select few. Because the scriptures clearly tell you in Romans. Chapter 11 and 7 says, What then? Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election have obtained it. And the rest were blinded. Okay? The rest, who? The two thirds, man. They were blinded. It was a curse put on them. Put on them. Okay? So that they don't see, they don't understand, they don't hear. Okay? They reject it. That type of uh, rebellious spirit was put upon them. This is why going back into Psalms chapter uh, 51 and verse 11, we pray that the Lord don't take his Holy Holy Spirit from us, man. Because what's going to happen? You're going to start walking in that rebellious uh, attitude. You're going to start walking that rebel type way. Okay? Meaning, you know, if the Lord takes his spirit from you, look what happened to Saul. It said the presence of the Lord departed from him and an evil spirit came upon him. Okay? So, you don't want that to happen. Because once that happens, you start getting entangled in this world. Entangled. Entanglement. Okay? You start having entanglement with this world. And then soon enough, sooner than later, right? You can't even pronounce the name of Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai. You know, you're losing your marbles when it comes to this scripture or that scripture. You're forgetting the meaning of, of, of um, you know, the scriptures. The Lord slowly but surely takes it away from you because going back into John 6 and 65, it's him who gave it unto you to understand those keys, okay? He gave you that special key to open up those doors. Okay, so let's go back into um, Second Peter. Wow, it was windy as fuck outside, man. Second Peter. Mm. Uh, Nineteen. Yeah, Second Peter, chapter Second Peter, chapter one and verse nineteen. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. We're on two. Ye do well. Uh, ye do do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth. In a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scriptures of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So once again. We have what? A more sure word of prophecy, right? And guess what? It's the most high that, that makes that uh, uh, movement within you to understand these, like I said, giving you the keys, okay? And the two-thirds out here, they don't believe that this is how it's done. You know, the inspiration of the most high, the spirit of the most high, it's what's within those men, okay? Like I said, you have to have the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai upon you. If you don't have the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai upon you, then you're not going to understand this. It's like trying to get into a house. 
That's why I use the example with the keys. It's like trying to get into a house with the wrong keys. It's not going to fucking work. And second of all, not all keys fit, you know, just into a lock, right? You have bike keys, the U-lock keys, all all types of um, different keys. So when you walk up to that door, and let's say like this, let's say if a, a, a time of emergency, rain coming down at a heavy set, whatever, a time of emergency, and you need to get into that house, that location, okay? And everybody's trying to key. You all got one chance. Line up, you know. We all line up. Boop, boop, boop. You know, only the individuals, like I said, that have that key to open that door can, is allowed to go in. Okay? So, once again, it ain't come by the will of man. Okay? These prophecies ain't come by the will of man. It was the inspiration, the spirit of the Most High that moved upon these men to make them to speak and tell you what's coming down the pipe, okay? Like we always say, um, uh, Salakia, the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets, right? And a prophet in time was called what? A seer, somebody who sees off in a distance, meaning in the future, and can tell you what's going to happen. They're the ones to make it available to you. What's about to come down the pipe, okay? A visionary, a seer. As a matter of fact, let's... First Samuel chapter 9 and 9, before time in Israel, when a man went to inquire of Yahweh, thus he spake, Come and let us go to the seer. For he that is now called a prophet was before time called a seer. See? So that visionary, that man is supposed to be able to see the vision. And if you lack the vision, which, hey, some of these guys, even of the circumcision, Knowing that the Israelites, they lack the vision. When it comes to uh, prophecies such as the MOTB, hey, they ain't got those keys, man. The Lord didn't give them that spirit. He gave them just enough to know that the Israelites, you know, a little bit of doctrine here, a little bit of doctrine there, but that ain't the whole package. Once again, when you go to that door, that key must go all the way in, and you must turn it, and it doesn't break or nothing like that. You must turn it, and obviously, the door is going to open. If the door don't open, the key ain't right. So if your doctrine don't hold the whole weight, if you're not telling the hundred percent truth, that key, that door is not going to open. Okay. So going back into this, this is the job that we have to do. Like I read, you know, that wisdom that is held up. Or that treasure that is held up, what what use is it? What good is it? Okay? If we put it to use. Okay? Just like wisdom, put it to use. Don't hold your tongue. Because the Lord gave you a, a, a job. All right? Just like riches. If you have your riches hoarded up, what, what use is it? Put it to play. You know? If anything, make it make more money. You know? Put it in use. Instead of having it stale, okay? Because instead of having your, your, your money just stashed in a bank like that, you know, you could put it to use. And a lot of people, they don't use their head when it comes to situations like that. Anyways, going back into this. And what are we doing with the treasure that the Lord gave us? We're putting it to use. Let your light so shine before men, right? We're putting it to use. This is why you see it's a dumb idea to argue with a two-third, trying to shove it down his throat to try and make him get it or he or her or whatever. Because if they're not of the elect, they're not going to get it, man. And furthermore, so we're only looking for the elect. 
That's our job. Okay. Arguing with a two third is is wasting your time, man. You know, that's a waste of time. That's a waste of breath, waste of energy. You come out of there feeling, you know, all disgruntled. And at the end, at the end of your day and week, what have you done? You know, this man is not going to listen. This man is not going to care. Okay. So going back into this. Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. Okay. So that's what we're doing. We, we, you know, we're set up as watchmen. We're set up as men who are, you know, given that ability through the spirit of Yahweh Shem Yahushai to go into these scriptures and explain to you the situation. Just like a manual book written in another language. Let's say you have somebody who's bilingual, French and English, and you only speak English. You're going to want them to give you the explanation or explain to you how it works or whatever in, you know, the um, English. What use is it if they explain it to you in French? Come see, come saw, je m'appelle, <laughs> whatever, you know what I mean? Like, you'd be like, what the fuck is je m'appelle? You know? What is come see, come saw? What are you talking about? So, you want, you want to be, uh, you want it to be explained in a language, or better yet, you want it to be explained so you can understand, right? So, this is the spirit that the Lord has given us. The spirit of understanding. Those are all gifts. Okay? The spirit of faith. Spirit to have faith. Hope. You know what I mean? Believe in him. You know? The strength to endure the things that we're going through. All those are gifts from Yahweh Shem Yahushai. Okay? All those are gifts from Yahweh Baha Shem Yahushai. All right? So, these gifts, you know, don't put them to waste. Don't put them to use. I mean, don't put them to waste. Put them to use. Anyways, so that's what, you know, a watchman is supposed to be doing. Reading that instructional manual and telling everybody what it is, okay, within that house. So let's go into another one. Jeremiah chapter 6 and 10. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, the, their ear is uncircumcised and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. Okay. You know what? Let me see something real quick. I got to. <laughs> I got to get it in the NLT here. Let me see something real quick, man. Let me just read it here real quick. To whom <laughs> can I give can I give warning? To whom can I give warning? Who will listen when I speak? Their ears are closed and they cannot hear. They scorn the word of Yahweh. They do not want to listen at all. They don't want to listen at all. So you see, it's a waste of time. Trying to argue with somebody or go back and forth with somebody and, you know, getting your blood pressure all high and, 
You know what I mean? Getting all angry and all upset and all this stuff. It's a waste of time to do that with these individuals. Okay? These two-thirds. The only thing you got to do, give them the word. All right, sir, be on your way. Okay? If they don't get it, they don't get it. So what? Okay? They scorn at the words of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. They don't give a rat's ass about what's going on out here. Okay? When we're telling you, you know, about the MOTB, you know what I mean? Babylon's going to drop. It's going to sink. Well, guess what? You know, Psalms chapter 49 and verse 11, you know, they're in that mindset too. They don't want this place to drop. Meanwhile, you know, they're going to college, trying to get a good degree on this, the good degree on that, right? They're trying to get up there, get get a new car. They don't want to hear that, you know, you're going to be forced to take an MLTB. It's not going to be a utopia, you know? It's going to be opposite of a utopia. So... When, they, when we're telling them about these things that are about to come down the pipe as seers, right, as the men of the Lord, they don't want to hear this. They don't want to hear that because that's just putting, you know, uh, how do you call it? That's just crushing their dreams and an, a, am, ambitions, okay? That's crushing their dreams and ambition. And at the end of the year, day and week, they love this place. They want to stay in this place. You know, they want to continue to go to the mall, buy their shoes, look for uh, hotties, as baddies and all that sh shit. You know, they love this place. So at the end of the year, day and week, as it says right here, they don't want to listen at all. Okay. So, you know, you don't have to argue with these people. Just speak the word. Speak the word of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. You know. And that's it. Put it out there. Put it on wax. Just arguing back and forth with these people. Fuck them. Who cares about them? Because in that chapter there of Ezekiel, it tells you, you know, we're getting the blood off of our hands. They don't want to listen. Well, remember, Lord gave you the spirit to listen. You out there listening? What does it tell you in Romans chapter 3? About that faith. Well, let me get this actually. Let's get this first. Romans chapter 10 and verse 18. Yep. <laughs> oh, man. Damn. I gotta get it in the LLT. <laughs> but I ask, but I ask, have the people of Israel actually heard the message? Yes. They have. So there's no excuse for them, man. They heard the word, okay? They heard the word of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. They have no excuse. All right. You have no excuse for your actions, what you do, what you're doing today. You heard the word. We gave you that discipline. We gave you that reproof. We showed you, hey, stop doing this. Stop doing that. You know, try your best to serve Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. Keep these high holy days. You know, don't uh, that. Come as you are, spirit type shit. No, this isn't that. You know, the Lord, the Lord obviously, you know, will reveal things over time. When you're coming into the truth as a babe, yeah, you, you know, you start learning. Oh, you know, that's I'm not supposed to do that. I'm not supposed to do this. Not, just as a child in this world, right? You come in, but eventually you get to a certain age where you already know by scripture. 
Hey, man, I ain't supposed to do that. Hey, man, I ain't supposed to be around these type of people. Hey, man, I ain't supposed to keep up in the... Hey, man, I ain't supposed... You have the ability to uh, check yourself, okay? Now, does a baby have the ability to check itself? No, okay? Baby doesn't have the ability to check itself, feed itself, you know what I mean? Wipe its own ass. So there's a certain point in time within this truth, you come to a certain age where, you know, like we always say, you know, you got to keep it real with yourself, man. Okay. And brothers always ain't going to be there to know what you're doing or this or that. You know what I mean? You have to be able to, to you know, read these scriptures and be able to uh, reflect. If you're doing this in, in, in sincerity and truth, you know, you should be able to read a scripture and know, oh, shit, you know what, man? Gotta confess my sins, man. I'm going off, man. I, I I gotta I gotta fast pray on this, man. I gotta quit that shit. You know what I mean? So have they heard the message? Yes, they've heard the message. But what's the difference here? They can't get it, but you could get it. Okay? They don't understand it, but you understand it. Right? They have no understanding of what's going on. They don't even know what time what time it is. Okay? Their minds all sick, corrupt. Alright? But you, you, you have the understanding of this. That's why I don't waste your time arguing with fools. Continuing the message has gone throughout the earth and the words to all the world. That's it. Okay? Ooh, fuck you. Yeah. So anyways, going back, um, speed this up and uh, close this out. Don't make this too long. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 8. What was it, 12? You know what, maybe I should get it here. Isaiah 8 and 12. Yeah, yeah, yep, 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 yep. This is this is uh the mindset of two, two thirds, you know. You try to tell them something of the scriptures, but let's get the scripture here. Isaiah chapter eight. Um Yeah, let me start from 12. Don't call everything a conspiracy like they do. And don't live in dread of what frightens them. Okay? Don't call everything a conspiracy. This is the, the mindset of two-thirds. You know, when we're telling them something that's good for them, wholesome for them, you guys are called... I heard the FBI said you guys are a hate group. You guys are like a uh, uh, CIA, uh, this, that. I heard so much. We're giving you the pure, unadulterated word of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh But yet you're fitting us into to fucking lumping us in with the conspiracy theorists. Okay? Trying to make it look like, you know, this is some kind of new uprising or new, new wave of, of something. And then trying to say it's a occultic. That's what they're really trying to get at. Because when you go to the root word of cult, you find out culture. Okay? But anyways. But that's how our people are, man. They say, they think suspiciously of everything. Okay? And it ain't, it ain't helping that you got people like Vocab out there. They'll get up in the air talking a bunch of uh, trash, a bunch of bullshit. Okay? And then furthering, furthering the, uh, uh, you know, the bullshit, right? You got our people out, out there thinking, oh, well, this conspiracy, this is it, you know. Instead of putting their trust into you, how about Shimei Shai? You know, they're all confused now, okay? They don't got a stable mind. 
Let's go into another scripture real quick, yo. Let me get that real quick. That's why we don't argue with you guys, man. We already know the mindset that you're in. We know our job. Our job is to preach this word. Let this word go out there. And the spirit of the Lord is going to drop the elect. Okay? Like in Romans chapter 10, 18, this word has gone out throughout the whole world. Matthew chapter 10 and 14, this word has gone throughout the whole world. Okay? Oikamin. So let's go back to this. And they have no excuse. They're refusing it because they don't want to get down. And you know the saying, get down or lay down. And the most high he's gonna he's he's tired of holding back. He gonna he gonna rip you asunder, okay? As a matter of fact, I don't know, it's not there. Um Jeremiah forty four and verse sixteen. As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name, like these, these, uh, are they, are they the same way that they try, these dummies, right? These dummies, these ignorant united in Christ, okay? Ignorant, ignoramus, <laughs> ignorant united in Christ, okay? Idiots united in Christ. You could call the Lord whatever you want. You could call him your plate yogurt. That's such a disrespectful thing to say. And when he goes on uh, those, you know, those interviews there that he tries to make make himself look highly and all this stuff. I, I, hey, why don't you say why don't you say that in front of those crowds that you could call the, the Lord whatever you want, your plate yogurt, and whatever. Why don't you say it in front of those crowds, huh? Let them see. Let let them, let them, let them, let's see what they got to say when you say that. Okay. You could call your how whatever you want to call them. You know the 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 two thirds they'll jump up and be like, yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. But even the so called white man would put your ass in place, man. And be like, what what are you talking about? Who told you that? Where are you getting this from that you could call? You know, God, whatever name that you want to call him. That would mean that you're calling on, on some other type of God because it's not the God of the Bible, right? Anyways, so Jeremiah 44 and 16, as for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of Yahweh, we will not hearken unto thee, okay? And you could go on to read the rest, but this is the mindset of our people, Okay? No, nah, we ain't listening to that that word that you speak in the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. No, nah, we ain't we ain't listening to that. Okay? We don't want to hear that. We don't want to hear nothing you have to say with that name. Okay? We don't want to hear nothing you have to say coming up anything to do with that Bible. Okay? We don't want to hear it. Get it away from us. This is their mindset, okay? They'd rather go out there and do fuckery than to actually listen to the word of Yahweh Shimei Oshai. They'd rather indulge in wickedness than to listen to Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Bahashim Rakak Wadash. They don't want to listen to us. They have a hard time stomaching this word as it is, man. They have a hard time stomaching, you know, anything. Anything we tell them. Anyways, let's continue. Man, this place is windy. Yeah, they have a hard time stomaching anything we tell them, man. When it comes to the scriptures, we give them reproof. I can't take that. That's a rough bowl of oatmeal. You know? To them is bitter. Bitter, 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 bitter. But what was told to Ezekiel? What was told to John? Hey, man. The bitter it is, the better it is for you. 
that they don't see that. It's going to Jude. This is why you don't waste your time. You know, this is why I said, we tell you, but do you listen? No, you don't listen. You don't care to listen. You don't want to listen. You know, this society is good for you, right? Everything that this society has to offer, whether you're into it or not, you're okay with it, which automatically makes you an enemy of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, okay? Because if you ain't doing what the Lord said to do in these scriptures here, which is pay homage to him, listen to him, obey, like the Lord said, this is my well-beloved son, hear him. If you ain't trying to get down with Yahweh Shai, then guess what? You're, you're an enemy onto Yahweh Shai, okay? Simple and plain. Jude 1 and uh, 14. Somewhere else I wanted to go with this, but uh, let me see. Ooh, that one. Hey, hey, let me get that one there, man. Jude 1 and 14. Because I was reading, just reading through. I didn't get to read through it before. I said, that, that is good. That is, I'll take the NLT for a second. Let me uh, get this real quick. Jude 1 and 14. Enoch, who lived in the seventh generation after Adam, prophesied. Do you see that? Prophesied. Enoch was a prophet too. So showing you going back, way back, even in the time of Adam. From the beginning of time, the Lord hasn't, the Lord don't just say, here, go out there. Like us, we, what the hell are you going to just throw your kids in a room and give them no order? So it's a bunch of chaos in that room. And when you get back, you get mad and say, what the hell are you doing? You can't do that to nobody. Nobody, what the hell kind of weird shit is that? You got to give somebody lines which creates bounds, right? And when they cross those lines, those bounds, you already warned them about crossing the lines and bounds. You tell them, listen, you cross that fucking line right there, I'm going to punch you in your eye. Simple and plain. Okay, sir. Sir said, don't pass that line. If you pass that line, he punch you in the eye. Plain and simple. Straight to the point. So when the Lord gave us law, statutes, and commandments... Those were for a reason, okay? To keep us in check. So he's done that from the beginning of time. He didn't just throw us out there and say, well, you guys fucked up from the beginning. No, from the beginning, the prophets were there, bet. So let's go into this. Enoch, who lived in, in this seventh, seventh generation after Adam, prophesied about these people, he said, listen, the Lord is coming with countless thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment on the people of the world. He will convict every person of all the ungodly things they have done. What the hell? They have done uh, what the heck? Where was I? Oh, here we go. He will convict every person of all the ungodly things they have done and for all the insults that for all the insults that ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Okay, all those murmurs, all those people talking shit about us, you know. Hey, all those people out there who, you know, hear people like ignorant, united in Christ, and they're spreading rumors and 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 tail bearing, 
false accusers saying that we grape, we teach grape and all this stuff, right? And making it look like, oh, oh, we told you to go grape little, you know what I mean? Little littles. We don't tell nobody to go grape little littles, okay? In fact, the brothers even tell you, hey, man, stay out of, stay away, stay out of the path from these uh, eaves, man, because they're just full of wickedness, okay? So who the hell is going to tell you or go out their way to tell you, you know what? Go grape a little, little. All that is, is false accusing. I'm going to do a video on them, too. Because you're a fucking false accuser. Tail bearer. Okay? And Lord said don't go up and down as a tail bearer, man. You're a false fucking accuser, Nate. You did, Hey, you could, there's a certain pattern with you, Nate. You did that shit back in the day when you were a cop. False accusing uh, 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 two, two Israelites, setting them up. And look now. Look what you're doing now. I got the, the tape. I went through that little interview that you did. I had to get it. I said, let me record this shit myself. Got it on tape of you saying, because the guy said, great millstone. And then they start to laugh. He's like, great, great millstone, great millstone. Yeah, they teach, they teach grape. No, we don't. Who the hell told you that? Okay. You're a fucking liar. All right. Six things that the Lord doeth hate, man. And you're on that list. That's why when it comes to you fucking ignorant, united in Christ, you IOIC guys, fuck you guys, man. You're a funky batch, all right? Your doctrine is like, 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 uh, old, how do you call it? Like gym stinking teenager, uh, hockey bag fucking stink clothes, man. Your doctor needs to, 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 to go to the laundromat. Okay? Fuck you niggas, man. Because that's how, that's how exactly you guys are. Niggas. Anyways, all you guys who want to speak those uh, lies and stuff like that, hey, the Lord's coming to judge you too. Okay? Put out judgment on you too. And like I said, people like you putting out stuff like that and then two-thirds hear that. They run around and saying that shit too. They're going to get judged too. But anyways. Tells you that Yahweh is coming with tens of thousands of his angels, man. That's in uh, Second Thessalonians. Okay. And what's going to happen? Judgment, man. Judgment upon this place. So like like we say, hey, don't, don't say like we never warned you. We warned you, man. We kept enduring your, 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 you know, your bullshit, your lies. You know what I mean? All the stuff that you would make up against us. You know what I mean? Twisting our words around, lying on our words and all this stuff. All this shit we had to endure, right? For your how about Shimei Shai. All this crap, all this bullshit. But at the end of your day and week, it comes with a price, Okay. Yours and uh, yours and ours. Ours, we getting a crown. Lord willing that we be of the elect. Yours, you gonna get destroyed. You you gonna you gonna get a harsh judgment. Okay, you gonna come back, but you gonna come back and have some shame for a little while. Okay, you gonna feel ashamed in the kingdom, knowing what you did in your past lives. So, two things there. Two. You know, you're working for something, we working for something. Your your workings are va vanity, are vain. Our workings is for eternal glory, okay? So, we tell you, but do you listen? No. The answer is no. Plain and simple. And you younger brothers who are coming into this truth, don't bother arguing with these people. You don't got to prove shit to them. If they're two-thirds... They're two fucking third. Just prove the point of what you're you're saying. And that's it. If they can't get it, like the apostle elders say, if a nigga can't get it, he'll get the fuck down the street, man. We're not here to change your diapers and fucking spood fiend you and all this bullshit. Take the baby jar, clank, clank, clank. You like this apple mush? 
No, we ain't, we ain't, no. The fuck out of here, you grown ass man or grown ass woman. The fuck down the streets, all right? But I hear the, the, the baby you niggas, coddling you niggas and, you know, burp you and shit like that. The fuck out of here, man. Niggas are sick. Really, that's what it is. You, you you guys are suffering from a fucking sickness, a mental sickness, okay? Move your bomba clot down the street, man. Grown-ass man taking care of a grown-ass man. Get the hell out of here, man. Grown-ass folks, and you can't even understand what we're trying to tell you. Just like Yahweh Shai said, what was it, Nicodemus? All right, let me get it here, actually. <laughs> I'm going to find it before I go. I'm going to find it before I go. Let me see. can't see it like that but I know see there in John 3 wait hold up see here hmm. yep 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 John chapter 3 let me go to um Where is that? John chapter 3, verse 12. Sakia. Yeah. Yep. Let me get it in the NLT. Sounds much better in the NLT. Let's get it real quick. But if I tell you, uh, but if you don't believe me, when I tell you about earthly things, how can you possibly believe if I tell you about heavenly things? Okay. <laughs> so this is the same thing with these two thirds, man. If we tell you about heavenly things, okay, and we're telling you about things that are about to come, okay, things that are in the future, about to come down the pipe, right? Things that the Lord has given us ability to see, you know. If we're telling you about those things, okay. Obviously, when we are explaining about things here, simplest things on the earth, how to conduct yourself, things uh, uh, pertain to the scriptures, right? We're just dealing with simple matters in life, man. Okay. If we're telling you about things in that manner, how could you... You're not going to understand the, the, the prophecies, the things that are to come off in the future, okay? You're not going to, you're not going to understand those things. What it is, is like I said, Psalms chapter 69. You know, the Lord has uh, put a block on your ears, man, and on your eyes. It's become a sneer onto you. You can't understand it. You're lost in the sauce, boss. So yeah, going back into this. You know, if I tell you about earthly things and you can't you can't believe, you know, how could I tell you about heavenly things, yo? You're not even gonna be on a level. You know, you know, these are gifts what you help about Shimmy Al Shai has given us. Okay. So hey man. I just want to go through that real quick, you know. We tell you but but do you listen? And the answer is no, they don't listen. Okay, they're hard-headed, as they say. So, hey, with that, all praises, all honor, all glory be unto Yahweh, Bahashem Yahushai, Bahashem Raka Kodash. Double honors to the apostles, elders of Great Millstone that rule well. Peace and salutation to the elect, and peace and salutation 
to the other Akim, the brothers out there doing and pushing this word in all honesty, truth, and sincerity. Worldwide. Shalom, Akim. Abad, Babal.